Pe ambasadorul Letoniei la Chișinău, Uldis Micuț, îl poți vedea deseori în parcul Valea Morilor, împreună cu soția sa, Gundega. Ambei vin aici după muncă sau în weekend. Tot aici i-am întâlnit și noi, într-o seară caldă de noiembrie. So, here is the place where you come after work. I think we spend quite a lot of time here yeah. because it's quite full, it's really a beautiful place. There is possibilities for walking, for running, for a lot of doing, lots of activities and roller skates to do as well. And you uh, live uh, not far from here, yes? <laughs> and of course, this is very convenient. We live not far. We used to come with children. Sunt stabiliți în Moldova de aproape trei ani și s-au mutat aici împreună cu cei patru copii ai lor. How about uh, children? What do they do in Moldova? First of all, they're following their parents and um, they are studying. Now three oldest are in school, the youngest in home. After school, they trying to enjoy life. They are doing roller skates here around the lake. Mm -hmm. They play football. In what schools? They are heritage. In what language? In English. They are, of course, studying Romanian as a special subject in school. Mm -hmm. And it's really good because there is practical opportunities where to use this language all the time and they are helping sometimes us. Did they want to come here in Moldova? Yes. Of course. You know, in the very beginning, before you arrive, uh, you try to grasp the information about the country. We spoke about Moldova, of course, at home, uh, and you know, the overall, overall feeling, overall picture was positive. The first, you know, the first impression, okay, we go, for, we go to another country, uh, there are, you know, a lot of interesting things to do, let's discover. And you know, this is the way of life, how we have chosen it. It's, you know, the routine of a diplomat of the family. Pasionați de călătorii ne-au povestit multe despre aventura lor prin localitățile noastre. You know that always when you go to the new country there is new adventure discovering national food as well. And we found that the food in Moldova is very tasty. What uh, especially? Placintas are there. Placintas. <laughs> Placintas always help uh, with children, also for ourselves, so different kinds of, of them. You, you know there is placinta for main food and for dessert. It's perfect opportunity. We never ever tried something like this, this kind of uh, food somewhere in, in, in before. But of course, then there is Zama and uh, Mamalega Kutakana. Yes, yes. and Asar Male, of course. Oh. Am mers împreună și la ambasadă, unde Gundegan a povestit despre proiectul pe care îl coordonează, punând la dispoziția celor interesați cărți pentru gusturi diferite. Here you can see some Latvian books, which is not only by Latvian writers, but even for, from Other countries as well, but they are translated in Latvia. Recent, mai exact pe 18 noiembrie, a fost Ziua Națională a Letoniei, zi în care letonienii marchează independența obținută în 1918. Cum este marcată această zi în țara dumneavoastră, domnule ambasador? I think we have to divide uh, normal times and pandemic times, unfortunately. Normally, what is organized uh, in Latvia It is a military parade with, you know, um, some um, equipment throw off and, and uh, some military uh, men and, and women uh, for the ceremonial parade. There are also concerts all around uh, the country. Of course, main focus is on the capital city, Riga, but uh, not only the capital, the whole country is celebrating. Of course, uh, depending on uh, family traditions, uh, this is the day uh, which is celebrated also in families, uh, somewhere, you know, in a wider circle of guests, somewhere just within the family. And of course fireworks. Fireworks uh, on uh, when the darkness uh, comes in the <laughs> night of 18th of November. So it is widely celebrated. Uh, we cherish uh, as a society this day and independence as such which we acquired 103 years ago in 1918. Spuneți că se sărbătorește și în familie, iar dumneavoastră ați ales să rămâneți aici împreună. Cum sărbătoriți în Moldova? I just wanted to mention that in Latvia there is really good traditions what we like that it's, it it has done normally take place in Riga that a lot of people all who wants come together of course 
before pandemic, and with the uh, lighted torches in hands, they go from um, uh, National Freedom Monument to uh, cemetery for um, soldiers. And it, it means they are going through the Riga, not only old Riga, but it's quite a long distance and it's so really nice, look, look, nice traditions when there is light inside in dark months. It is really nice family celebration because it's always connected with Latvian food and table and uh, some Latvian songs in home as well. And we are trying to remember what was in this day. Kids are uh, explaining what they know uh, about, maybe about history. Maybe we're thinking about next year, what we would expect for ne next year for our family, for our country, how it will be. And uh, perhaps one more detail. 18th of November is Independence Day, but uh, there is 11th of November. And that is the day uh, when we remember fallen soldiers uh, for these fights for independence. Because in fact, after we declared independence in 1918, it was followed uh, with uh, quite heavy fights for that independence to get it de facto. And 11th of November of 1919 was in fact one of the biggest fights for that independence. And so uh, this is the day when we remember those, those fallen soldiers. So November, November is in fact very, very important months for Latvia. But I think it's a nice tradition in family as well because on 11 of November we always put candles in the windows. And I would say this November is, is a dark month uh, from the perspective of the uh, daylight, but at the same time, you know, country is always full with light, with, with light, with from candles at 11 of November, 18 of November, and for us it's quite full of light and full of hope. Ați venit în Republica Moldova în urmă cu trei ani. Cum vă amintiți prima impresie, acel moment în care ați intrat în Moldova? Ce v-ați spus? We came in February of 2019. Uh, and uh, you know we came by car uh, the whole family and it was somehow the foggy really foggy evening and so uh, no clear blue skies but you know just the fog around darkness around uh, uh, it was like uh, you know this this was the first impression but you know the next day when we started you know to meet people first our colleagues at the embassy already you know the first uh, uh, Moldovan partners uh, there was no fog at all. <laughs> it was, you know, a Sunny. clear picture, really a sign of uh, cooperation, sign of, you know, forthcoming attitudes for ourselves as, you know, newcomers. Uh, despite the first foggy impression, everything what came after was rather clear and bright, like, you know, sunny day. Dar îmi povesteați că v-ați rătăcit pe un drum de țară. Uh, well, I think this was connected with the fog. This was connected uh, with, you know, uh, missing the right road uh, from the border, you know, towards the city. But nevertheless, we managed to come out of that, uh, that wrong road uh, with some adventures. But still, you know, uh, after that, if we compare, we can say everything uh, went really, really good and everything went up. And I would say that it was really best time to come because in February it was dark, but after February there is a March, then there is April. It means the nature even helped us because it becoming every day brighter and brighter. And then we quite soon we started to see the first all the greeneries coming out and flowers. And it was, yeah, with every day we felt better and better and it was really nice so to see all this nature waking up and helping us. In Republica Moldova, peste puțin timp, va prins aici pandemia de coronavirus. Cum credeți că a fost gestionată această criză în Moldova și, pe de altă parte, cum a fost gestionată în Letonia? You know, I think, uh, as experience, global experience shows, uh, the pandemic, uh, pandemic goes in waves. So some, at one moment you are uh, in a really good situation, so to say uh, somewhere at the low level, but then it goes up and, and you are at heights. Uh, in Latvia, currently, we unfortunately face big numbers of, uh, of infections. And for that reason, uh, 
the authorities uh, took a decision in the middle of October to uh, put in place uh, really strong limitations and there is emergency situation declared as well. Of course also in the Republic of Moldova we've seen also recently a spike in uh, positive cases so the figures are going up. I think uh, there are no let's say uh, fully ready-made uh, elements uh, apart from the vaccination. Vaccination uh, is obviously the only solution which has been created uh, to prevent the uh, f falling, uh, falling sick, uh, so to have the COVID, or if you have the COVID then the experience again shows that uh, this is usually in a mild form. So I would say the vaccination is a key. Here, obviously, there need to be efforts, perhaps more and more, uh, to convince people, to convince society to get vaccinated. I always uh, think uh, that, you know, important is your own example. So you lead by example. And, you know, uh, I think every member of society, every person can contribute by getting vaccinated and by convincing his, you know, relatives, family, friends, also to get vaccinated. Dumneavoastră, cum ați suportat aici pandemia, restricțiile? This pandemic came as a shock for a lot, lot of people. And a lot of people was not happy. And of course, there was restrictions and a lot of people suffered. I think we were happy in family because we are healthy. We all the time are connecting, um, calling and speaking with our relatives in Latvia. All of them are vaccinated. We feel safer because we are not, not able to meet them quite often. In the family, I think our school did very well and kindergarten is this distance learning. For us, it was good experience and no problems at all. From one side, I even liked it because, you know, it was all family all time together. Because before pandemic, there is quite busy kids are in school or in kindergarten. Husband is working all time in office. Afterwards, you have um, a lot of things what to do. And the finally, it was like everybody was put on a stop, a little bit stop, don't run so fast, spend more time in family. We started to, um, to play more board games in home or to do a lot of sport activities outside. Movies together. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of movies. Uh, I was working from home. Uh, you know, the kids were at home, you know, learning from distance. I think, you know, Every crisis is an opportunity and we really try to use that opportunity to strengthen our family bonds. In this period, the Union European has come with a special important support for the Republic of Moldova so that our country can be able to reduce the crisis caused by the pandemic and to relax the economy. What are the plans for the future? I think the key phrase, key word is solidarity. And this is also uh, how we feel as the country member state of the European Union and the whole European Union as such. We wish to really provide support uh, to our partners, to our friends, also to, to the Republic of Moldova. And uh, I believe everybody can see that in practice with the help of uh, delivery of vaccines, humanitarian assistance. And we as Latvia also did that uh, in, uh, in August of, of this year. Uh, we provided this b batch of vaccines uh, free of charge. Also, of course, by uh, financial funds to help different sectors uh, here in Moldova. There are needs, of course, health sector, uh, and capacity of the health sector. Of course, uh, different sectors of economy, especially, you know, those who are much affected by these pandemics, and here I can mention Horeca sector. And of course, uh, help and assistance to most vulnerable uh, groups of society. For all that, you know, we as a Team Europe, we as a team of 27 member states, try to support and try to assist uh, so that 
you know, people can really benefit on that assistance. Letonia implementează aici anumite proiecte de sprijin uh, pentru Republica Moldova și care sunt următoarele proiecte pe care urmează să le implementați? Development cooperation uh, of Latvia uh, with Moldova is certainly one of the biggest priorities also for the work of the embassy. Moldova has been the priority beneficiary when it comes to these bilateral projects and since 2005 more than 90 projects have been implemented for the amount of 1.4 million uh, euros. Currently, you know, there is annual grant competition, so we provide uh, financial uh, support for joint projects. This year in 2021 there had been several projects also supported. Uh, I can mention here uh, the cooperation between the medical authorities, uh, including also this uh, here Emergency uh, Assistance Institute on Toma Chorba, with cooperation with one Latvian uh, uh, medical authority. Also, we usually uh, support uh, elements which are connected with the media literacy and the fight against disinformation. Another area where we are looking at is uh, the good governance and assistance to small and medium enterprises. So every year there are those projects and we're constantly trying to expand and trying also to look at different avenues. Credeți că se face suficient de mult dacă tot am ajuns la acest subiect pentru a combate dezinformarea în această perioadă atât de complicată? We in Latvia were one of the first ones uh, who started to talk not only about pandemics when it comes to COVID, but also about infodemics, which is everything uh, what is connected, let's say, with disinformation, with misinformation or with propaganda. Of course, with uh, different information flows around and uh, different opinions in society, it is a question of more and more these mis misinformation and disinformation elements coming into. We Uh, think that we have uh, really good actors uh, in Latvia who are trying, you know, to put forefront the communication perspectives, also the work with media. I can mention here, for example, uh, the uh, Stratcom Center of Excellence of NATO, which is located in Riga and which has good knowledge and really good experience into communication elements. We have also Baltic uh, Media Center of Excellence, which is the regional organization focusing mainly on Eastern partnership countries, including Moldova, focusing on uh, media work, on the fight against disinformation. And we have also, let's say, a couple of projects in a pipeline together with them here in Moldova and with Moldovan counterparts. So we also try to contribute with our share into this, let's say, difficult and challenging fight against Disinformation. Care credeți că sunt perspectivele Republicii Moldova de a se apropia de Uniunea Europeană? What we see uh, after the elections uh, in, in July, both from the Parliament and from the government, there is a strong commitment towards reforms, towards, you know, making the country better, the system modern, more transparent and friendly towards, you know, the people, towards, uh, towards the society. I think this is the key to sustain, to go really that way of reforming and of uh, orienting the policies uh, towards the pro-European values. And then, you know, on, on this road, uh, I am completely sure that uh, the Euro integration uh, elements uh, will be closer and closer. Uniunea Europeană uh, a recomandat anumite reforme uh, pentru Republica Moldova, în special în ceea ce privește combaterea corupției și reformarea justiției. Cum vedeți evoluția acestor uh, domenii? I mentioned uh, this strong commitment uh, by you know, the, the new parliament, the new government uh, to put an emphasis on uh, reforming the justice sector, uh, fighting corruption, strengthening the good governance, etc. Uh, we see really, really good signs uh, 
also in a practical sense. But I think my plea would be, okay, it's just even not, you know, 100 days since uh, the uh, forming the government. And I believe, uh, you know, these are very, very thorough and uh, issues full with needs. Uh, so that means uh, there needs to be some time given to the authorities. But really, first signs are encouraging. And I think uh, this commitment is a clear sign that, uh, you know, the political power is certainly for making uh, the reforms happen. Republica Moldova și Letonia s-au confruntat cu o serie de probleme similare de-a lungul timpului și mai ales în ultimele decenii. Letonia la fel a trecut printr-o criză a migrației, a emigrării populației, la fel și Republica Moldova. Este ceva ce am putea să învățăm de la Letonia? What is important is to actually realize that opportunity for migration is not something bad. It's good. Because this gives, you know, choices and opportunities for people. If they wish to, you know, to go to another country, to work, to study, to live, uh, whatever. This is a choice. What is very important for the country itself is, you know, to create the environment, you know, conducive, so that uh, those people who left are actually looking back and uh, starting to rethink why should I stay abroad I better come back you know where my family is where my relatives are most of the friends so creating this environment is very very important I think uh, you know we Latvia we faced that challenge of migration uh, heavily especially after accession to the European Union when you know the labor market in another EU countries uh, was open. So uh, there was a lot of uh, people going for, you know, better salaries uh, and, and, and work somewhere abroad in another EU countries. Now this phenomena is, uh, let's say, balanced. Many people return. Still, some go and look for opportunities abroad. And this is normal process. In Latvia, we have, uh, I think, achieved uh, quite a good result in creating this environment, in uh, facilitating uh, or improving the level of life, so that people uh, really think, not even twice, but uh, five, seven times before they leave. And this is a key. And I think if, you know, such an approach can be somehow facilitated here, I think this, this, this could be a very, very good and interesting way forward. Republica Moldova a trecut în această toamnă printr-o criză fără precedent în sectorul energetic, care vine din faptul că din totdeauna țara noastră a fost dependentă de gazul oferit de Rusia, de către Gazprom. S-au făcut, făcut niște încercări, s-au adus anumite cantități de gaz din alte state și din nou a fost semnat un contract cu Gazprom. Cum vedeți dumneavoastră această problemă? First important element is that apparently the immediate Uh, gas shortages are solved, so uh, the gas uh, uh, will be delivered uh, according to to concluded uh, contract between uh, the Gazprom and, and Moldova Gas. It is also important that uh, these discussions for several weeks, uh, which lasted, showed, uh, let's say, some necessities for you know finding alternatives, uh, alternative uh, gas suppliers, finding uh, another ways, thinking creatively what to do if really the crisis uh, would not uh, be solved. It is obvious that there are still uh, elements on the table, uh, you know, according uh, to protocol of the negotiations, uh, which uh, which is is made public. So we will. Uh, just of course carefully follow the further processes. It is important also to identify that, uh, that actually, and once again, these issues, energy issues, uh, gas can be used also as a ge geopolitical tool by certain actors, um, rather than, you know, uh, put only as uh, economic uh, element. 
and uh, this is uh, really a negative sign. In Latvia we have uh, um, our gas storages, which uh, in fact, uh, if you know something not foreseen comes, uh, these are sufficient uh, for the winter months uh, for sure. And you know, uh, for us we are also working on the diversification of uh, the uh, energy sector so that we are not dependent just from one actor in the market, but we can, you know, have supplies from different different uh, places from different countries so that we can feel safe. Care este primul cuvânt care vă vine în minte când spuneți Moldova? Okay. Wine. <laughs> and vineyards. Why? Because when we're walking around, we can see that there is a lot of vineyards. And because of this um, physically the ups and downs, it's really nice looking. And in, especially in winter time, when these colors start to come inside, and these vineyards look beautiful. And there is possibilities to, to do a walks and to do the walks through the vineyards. For us, it's really nice, nice and interesting because in Latvia we don't have so many vineyards. You know, we came uh, to Moldova straight from uh, Vienna, from Austria, from another posting uh, uh, before. And, you know, Austria is also a winemaking country and we in Vienna we live on the foot of actually Vineyard Hill and we used to walk uh, long distances there, you know, up the hill with a wonderful view over the uh, Austrian capital city enjoying those vineyards in all different seasons of, of the year. And we're happy actually that we found these opportunities also here in Moldova. So it's somehow connecting our, you know, life in Austria and our life here in Moldova. Dacă aveți un poet sau un scriitor preferat în literatura românească? One of the one of my favorite ones is uh, is Grigore Vieru. I do remember still from uh, my childhood that uh, I have read, you know, also his his poetry, uh, you know, because uh, In what language? It was in Latvian language, because he is translated and several books are available in Latvian. Aveți o sărbătoare preferată în Moldova? Marțișor. Marțișor? How you pronounce it correctly? Yeah. Marțișor. I have also another, uh, you know, celebration day, which is, is quite close to my heart, and that's Independence Day. Taken together, actually, with uh, the day of the language. That is the core of, of one country. La finalul întâlnirii noastre, ambasadorul Letoniei și soția sa au avut un mesaj pentru locuitorii din Moldova. Be proud of your country. It's really beautiful. It's a lot of things that can be offered, not just for foreigners, but for yourself as well. Discover Moldova and tell people, other people about it. Also, try to contribute. Try to contribute to make the country better, more modern, uh, transparent, you know, also in a systemic way. Try to help with reforms, with, you know, participating in the life. And then, you know, this is an effort for all citizens and inhabitants together.